Hello everyone, happy evening, a very good evening. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Uh, a quick nod whether the audio visual is all good. Yes. Hi. Uh, happy evening, everyone. A very good evening. Uh, so here we are to discuss the top 10 mnemonics and antimicrobials. I believe you have read this topic yesterday itself in the daily targets, the timetable that we are following. So uh, this is just a quick revision, uh, right, of whatever you might have read yesterday to reinforce uh, because daily revision is something which is very, very important. Uh, so, I had basically given you uh, this as a quiz uh, of the 10 MCQs and that is what we are going to discuss. Uh, how many of you have attended the quiz? Let me show you the results also of the quiz, like uh, who is the topper in the today's quiz. Uh, so, we have uh, Saiba uh, who has got 40 on 40, that's super awesome. Then we have Sayantan, Kajal, uh, Javeria Begum and Shiny who've got 35 okay so basically you've got 35 that is nine correct and one incorrect right so these are the results we are going to discuss the quiz kit 10 questions so the links of these quizzes the test i'll keep sharing on the telegram group so please stay connected there uh, the telegram group name is basically dr nikita's rad synapse okay that is the telegram group okay so let's start with the discussion you would see the answers here already of the questions so i'll be telling you that how to remember these uh, basically with the mnemonics so gray baby syndrome is basically seen with chlorophenicol now just don't remember that gray is a gsc right we have a lot of mnemonics uh, where we see that uh, g looks similar to c so the gray baby syndrome is seen with a drug which starts with c so this adds to the confusion whether it is clindamycin, it is that it is a cotrimoxazole or it is chloramphenicol. So remember that gray is a color. Okay, so gray is basically a color. So I write this as color. So remember it is chloramphenicol. Okay, remember it is chloramphenicol. The link of the quiz was shared on the telegram group in the evening where I had mentioned that these questions would be discussed uh, in the uh, evening. So remember that gray baby, gray color, color is chlorem, chlor color that is chloramphenicol. Okay, gray baby syndrome is seen with chloramphenicol. Uh, which drug shows red man syndrome? Red man, remember man is a van. Man is rhyming with uh, van. So that is vancomycin. Okay, red man syndrome is seen with vancomycin basically because of histamine release. How can we reduce this uh, redness, the red man syndrome by giving slow infusion, okay, by giving slow infusion, all right. Going to the next one, E is the major mechanism of action of which of the following drugs, major mechanism of resistance, not action, the mechanism of resistance to which of the following drugs, E is the mechanism. What is E shown as? E is, a. Uh, just give me a minute. Not able to see the live chat, just give me a minute. Right. So, the E mechanism is basically the E flux. So, let's learn the tricks to remember the mechanism of resistance to this antimicrobial drugs. Now, one important thing to remember here, you can see here that it is written as aquarium air pump. Right. So, basically, this is the pump or this brand name. You can see here, basically, it is tetra. 
tetra. So remember that this is a tetra pump, right? Remember the image, the visual memory. So tetra is basically tetracyclines and the pump is basically the efflux pump. So remember the major mechanism of resistance to tetracyclines is by efflux. The rest of the mechanism of resistance that we have is enzymatic breakdown. Okay, enzymatic breakdown, the antimicrobials which develop resistance because of uh, enzymatic breakdown is A, B, C. Okay, remember A, B, C. So, remember that we had this movie of which was related to break dance. That is A, B, C, D. Remember A, B, C, D wala break dance wala movie. So, break dance is breakdown. A, B, C that is amino glycosides, beta lactams and chloramphenicol. Decreased permeability is amino glycosides. Permeability matlab andar ana. Right, permeability. So basically remember that ana jana. Ana is less with amino glycosides. So decreased permeability, the resistance is for amino glycosides. So you will see amino glycosides here both. Enzymatic breakdown also and permeability also. This is the major mechanism for amino glycosides, the inactivating enzymes. Tetra is the pump, efflux pump. Sulfonamides we know basically are related to the folic acid wala pathway. Sulfonamides, PABA, folic acid. So that is basically the metabolism in the body. So it is altered metabolic pathway is sulfonamides. This is very very important. What is the mechanism of resistance in MRSA? It's basically the altered target. MRSA Basically, in them, the penicillin binding proteins, the PBP, which is the target for methicillin that is altered. So altered target is basically MRSA. This is very, very important. At least remember that. Okay, remember that. Now, going back to the image here, basically, what do we have? A is the target site modification. The binding site is basically altered. So, this is MRSA. Decreased permeability, the drug is not entering in ana jana. Ana is amino glycosides. Enzymatic degradation breakdown basically is ABCD. So amino glycoside, beta lactam, chloramphenicol. Okay, that is chloramphenicol. And E flux is the tetra pumps. Okay, that is tetracycline. So E is for tetracycline. Okay, remember that E is for tetracycline. All right. Is this uh, clear with everyone? Okay, that's great. Now, let's go to the next one. Which of the following is a bacteriostatic anti-tubercular drug? And the answer is ethambutol. Okay, the answer is ethambutol is a bacteriostatic drug. So, remember that which are the sidal drugs? Okay, we are talking about the first line drugs. Which are the sidal drugs? Remember, sidal matlab to kill someone. Kill is rip apart. Okay, the drug rips apart the tubercular bacteria. So remember that the drug which rips apart the TB bacteria that is makes it dead that is sidal. So rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, streptomycin these are basically sidal. Ethambutol is a static drug. Okay so remember the sidal drug rips apart the TB bacteria. Okay it rips apart so, rips matlab tor for kar dena. So, that is sidal drugs. So, ethambutol is a static. What is the side effect that we are worried about with ethambutol? Remember E for eye. So, that uh, basically affects the eye, the vision, color blindness is what we see with ethambutol. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. What is the drug of choice for fasciola hepatica? What is the drug of choice for fasciola hepatica? That is triclobendazole. Okay, that is triclobendazole basically is the drug of choice. Now, the, the trick to remember here for the rest of them, basically cystodes, trematodes may generally the drug of choice is praziquantel. Okay, it is praziquantel which is a drug of choice. Cystodes, trematodes may generally. But here... Uh, in fasciola hepatica, so remember it is triclabendazole, triclabendazole, remember it as flag, okay, the flag of India, which is basically tricolor, okay, remember it is tricolor, so remember flag, that is fasciola flag is tricolor, that is triclabendazole, so 
वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर फेशियोला हिपैटिका इज ट्रैक्लाबेंडेजोल ओके ट्रैक्लाबेंडेजोल नेक्स्ट वन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग बैक्टीरियाइडल ड्रग एक्ट बाय इनहिबिटिंग प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस नाउ रिमेंबर दैट द सेल वॉल सिंथेसिस वाले ड्रग्स दे आर साइडल ड्रग्स ऑल ऑफ देम आर साइडल ड्रग्स द ड्रग्स विच आर प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस इनहिबिटर्स दे आर स्टैटिक ड्रग्स except what is the exception here the drugs which are protein synthesis inhibitor but they are sidal the two group of drugs that is amino glycoside and streptogramins okay that is dq okay quinoprestin wala remember amino glycoside it includes streptomycin also so streptomycin streptogramin they are basically sidal So this is an amino glycoside, gentamicin. This is an amino glycoside. So remember, this is protein synthesis, wala, but it is a sidal drug. Okay, but it's a sidal drug. Tetracycline. What is the mechanism of action? It is protein synthesis inhibitor. We'll see again the mnemonic. Uh, uh, you know, by at thirty. So this acts at thirty s. Protein synthesis, wale, are static drugs. Vancomycin linozolid. Okay, what is their mechanism of action? Vancomycin acts on the cell wall, or is it a protein synthesis inhibitor? It is a cell wall synthesis inhibitor, right? So, what is the mnemonic for cell wall synthesis inhibitor? Imagine a beta that is a son asking the father to get all the vehicles. पहले बोलेगा साइकल लेके दो. Then it, uh, then the beta will say, I want a Ford. Then I want a van, and then I want a bus. So beta is basically beta lactams. Cycle is cycloserine. Okay, cycloserine. Ford is basically phosphomycin. Van is vancomycin, and bus is bacitracin. Okay, bus is bacitracin. So these are the drugs which basically act on the cell wall synthesis inhibitors and these are sidal drugs okay and these are sidal drugs remember beta asking for cycle ford van and bus now uh, linozolid linozolid basically acts on the 28s subunit of 50s it inhibits the protein synthesis initiation remember it inhibits the initiation so again it's a protein synthesis wala drug so it is a static drug okay it is a static drug cell wall wale are sidal in protein synthesis streptomycin streptogramin these are sidal so gentamicin is basically a sidal drug okay it's a sidal drug and remember that another very very important point for amino glycosides remember they have no activity against anaerobes a is anaerobes no is no activity they have no activity against anaerobes they require oxygen for their activation for the drug to act so they cannot be effective against anaerobes okay so all drugs inhibiting protein synthesis are bacteriostatic except amino glycosides and streptogramins next one incorrect match regarding the mechanism of action of antifungals very very important and an easy trick basically to remember this is um i hope i'm audible and visible to everyone a quick thumbs up all right great okay so coming to mechanism of action of antifungals okay antifungals <laughs> thank you so much uh, shweta so let me try and zoom this for you so the first one what is incorrect regarding the mechanism of action of antifungals pore formation in membrane amphotericin inhibits lanosterol to ergosterol flu cytosine you can already see that's the answer 
Uh, beta D glucan synthesis anidula fungin and squalene epoxidase is terbinafin. So let's have a look at this antifungus mechanism of action ka diagram. So basically in the fungus you have the cell membrane here you have uh, the you know look at the drugs which are forming the pores. So artificial pores, pores forming they are the cidal drug. So remember ampotericin okay basically it is ampotericin. So it is forming the pore okay remember ampotericin is forming the pores and it is tearing the fungus so it's a sidal one okay so remember ampotericin is pore forming and tearing the fungus then you have the next one what acts on the microtubules is the griseofulvin microtubules forming the spindles right they are moving along so remember that griseofulvin is like a grease it is not allowing the movement of the microtubules. So, remember microtubules is griseofulvin. Next one here, flu cytosine. Now, many times in anti-cancer drugs also we have discussed, wherever you have purine pyrimidine ka naam, that basically tells you that it is competing with the original purine pyrimidine and inhibiting the nucleic acid synthesis, right? So, like you have an anti-cancer like cytarabin, that is also cytosine wala. So, that is again your anti-metabolite wala anti-cancer drug, inhibiting the nucleic acid, okay. Similarly, your flu cytosine, cytosine, right, uracil, thymidine, these are basically pyrimidines, okay, these are pyrimidines. So, this is basically blocking your nucleic acid. Next, you have uh, squalene, which is forming lanosterol, which is forming ergosterol, which then gets incorporated into the wall. So, ergosterol is a very important component of the fungal cell wall, right? So, here the conversion, ergosterol synthesis is inhibited by terbinafin and azoles both. The step at which they are acting is different. Remember the first step, squalene, SK bath alphabetically PQRST, squalene epoxidase, that is the step which is inhibited by terbinafin. And azole, OL, is inhibiting the conversion of OL to OL. That is lanosterol to ergosterol. Okay. So, that is the azole's mechanism of action. So, squalene epoxidase, terbinafin and azole is basically the conversion. And then you have your anidula fungin vagera. That is basically echino candens. Okay. The candens. The candin tells you can is basically the glue can. Okay. It is inhibiting the glucan synthesis like anidula fungin, caspo fungin. So, these drugs candin valley they inhibit the beta D glucan. So, let's have a look at the option. Pore is ampotericin, glucan is your echinocandins, anidula fungin, squalene is terbinafin, flu cytosin is basically your nucleic acid synthesis inhibitor, lanosterol to ergosterol, OL, OL, this is the mechanism of action of azoles. It is not flu cytosine. Okay, it is not flu cytosine. So remember, uh, this is uh, basically what we need to remember here in antifungals mechanism of action. Going to the next one. So the question here is basically saying about a 55 year old woman presents to hospital with these complaints. Test exchange is showing pneumonia and it is positive for aspergillus. Which is the most appropriate treatment? So, basically the question is for aspergillus, what is the most appropriate drug? And it is variconazole. The uh, tip to remember here is when you write aspergillus ka A, when you write A, make it ulta inverted, it becomes V. So, basically remember that variconazole is the drug of choice for aspergillus. A ka inverted is basically V. Remember A is V, this is variconazole, okay, this is variconazole for uh, aspergillus. Remember variconazole is not active against mucormycosis, okay, it's not active against mucormycosis. Next one, time dependent killing with minimal or no post antibiotic effect. So basically in antimicrobials you have concentration dependent killing, you have time dependent killing. Basically, some antimicrobials, only if they are at high concentration, they will kill the bacteria. For others, it is the period of time for which they are available to kill the bacteria that is more important 
then the concentration right here the question is about time dependent killing with no post antibiotic effect that means there is no residual effect when the antibiotic is gone the effect is also gone so the answer here is vancomycin a very easy trick to remember here is basically remember bv okay that is bv in hindi that is basically bv that is what i can write it as bv so basically beta lactams and vancomycin these are the drugs which have time dependent killing and they have no post antibiotic effect how do we remember this is jo bv hoti hai basically the wife right the longer as the duration increases of the husband and wife staying together that is the years after marriage like if this is the marriage date first year second year third year fourth year the number of arguments and fights they go on increasing that is time dependent okay it depends on since how much time you know it has uh, the marriage has been there so it is time dependent killing but you know uh, bv or uh, husband ka jhagda is also like they will forget once the argument the fight is over okay they will not remember it so remember there is no residual effect raat gayi baat gayi that is how their fight is so it is time dependent the longer the time the more the fights right initial it's all cozy cozy and then all the arguments and the fights of course it does not happen in all the marriages but there is no post antibiotic effect remember there is no residual effect both of them forget it so remember bv is basically time dependent killing with no post antibiotic effect okay with no post antibiotic effect all right next one which is a nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor the question is not nucleoside okay the question is not nucleoside the question is which is a nucleotide remember this is tied t for no for v okay that is the no for v remember the nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor is the no for v okay what is ritonavir all the navir drugs navir is protease inhibitors raltegravir tegra is basically your integra that is your integrase wala inhibitor okay the integrase inhibitor then you have abacavir abacavir is also the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor so zidobudine is nrti abacavir is nrti remember tenofovir t is this is a nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor okay it's a nucleotide not a nucleoside or a non nucleoside it is a nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor okay very very important uh going to the next one which of the following does not bind to 50s subunit does not bind to 50s subunit so basically this 50s 30s these are the ribosomes required for protein synthesis so we are talking about the antimicrobials acting by inhibiting the protein synthesis inhibitor the mnemonic to remember is by at 30 and it is cells at 50 okay so by at 30 a and t is at 30s that is uh, a and t is basically amino glycosides and tetracycline including tigase cycline cells is basically chloramphenicol then you have erythromycin that is macrolides okay then you have your linezolid lincozamide let us clindamycin and you have streptogramin which act as 50s look at this one so 30s is basically by at 30 amino glycosides tetracycline including tigase cycline okay 50s is cell chloramphenicol erythromycin linezolid indamycin that is lincozamide and you have streptogramins okay and you have streptogramin that is quinupristin dalfopristin the dq streptogramin this are 50s now out of these we said that which protein synthesis inhibiting drugs are sidel it is streptomycin right that is amino glycoside and streptogramins okay these are the ones which are Uh, sidel the rest of them are mostly static so linezolid is also static remember by at 
30 and cells at 50 okay and cells at 50 that is what we need to remember okay right so that completes the 10 mnemonics that was very quick let's just quickly revise here first one gray baby gray is a color color is chloramphenicol okay next is tetra pump so the efflux is the tetra pump that is tetracycline then we have static antituberculus rips apart that is sidle so rips is sidle Static is ethambutol. You don't have E here. Faciola is a flag tricolor. The drug of choice is triclabendazole. Bactericidal protein synthesis wala drug, streptogram and streptomycin, that is gentamicin also. Then you have antifungal flu cytosine. Cytosine inhibits your nucleic acid synthesis. The next one, aspergillus, the drug of choice is Voriconazole. A ka ulta is V. That is Voriconazole. Then time dependent killing, no post antibiotic. It is BV. That is uh, beta lactams and vancomycin. They have time dependent killing with no post antibiotic effect. Nucleotide is a tenofovir. Okay, it's a tenofovir which is nucleotide. Does not bind to 50S. That means bind to 30S at 30. So aminoglycoside that includes streptomycin and tetracycline. Cells is at 50. So C E L. This is at 50 S. Uh, this is aminoglycoside which is at 30 S. So the answer is streptomycin. Okay, the answer is streptomycin. Right. So that was the quick session on the top 10 mnemonics and antimicrobials. There's much more, of course, to antimicrobials than this. This was just a quick test and the discussion of the questions i hope all of you have enjoyed this and uh, we'll keep meeting again very frequently uh dr mini what to do about the backlog of pharmacology every day try to squeeze in at least half an hour half an hour so that you finish the backlog of whatever subjects you have okay don't let it hang over your head for a long period of time try to squeeze in half an hour uh, you know from wherever you can uh, please do that okay and uh, one one small tweak in the timetable that we have made is since i've received a lot of messages from the students sunday like every sunday uh, alternate sundays we have kept as a grand test day the rest of the alternate sundays also i'll be keeping it free for you so that you get break time you get time to complete your backlogs and it does not lead to burnout so uh, uh, so it will lead to few days increase in the number of days but i think that's okay because the breaks are also equally important. Okay. Or post test hone wala hai, uh, 9.30 p.m. for today. It's going to be entire uh, pharmac, uh, okay, that we will be having. All right. The next subject in your daily targets in, uh, uh, is uh, basically anesthesia. We will have two days of anesthesia. So instead of 23, 24, it is going to be 23 and 25. Use 24 either to relax or to complete the backlog, you know, whatever you want to do on Sundays. Okay. So, thank you so much, everyone. See you again soon. Uh, and I'll update you about all the upcoming classes uh, on the Telegram group. So, please stay connected there. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Take care and keep studying. Keep